For more interesting videos, subscribe to Tech Simplified TV and hit the bell icon for updates. Hey there, welcome to the very first episode of Perl Programming in VLSI. In this episode, we are going to discuss where Perl is used in VLSI, introduction to Perl scripting language, installation guide, hello world in Perl, defining a variable in Perl, variable type declaration in Perl, my, local, our variables, okay. Special variables in Perl, special literals and bare word. So let's begin. Where Perl is used in VLSI. So this is the thing you first need to uh, get aware uh, so that your motivation of learning Perl is in the right direction. Apart from VLSI, the Perl is also used in uh, web hosting and uh, web applications. But but for VLSI, uh, the Perl is a very widely used language. And it is used in automation to run batch jobs in local or remote machines such as LSF. Quality check and quality analysis, that is QC QA of text outputs of various uh, VLSI tools. Data intensive comparison between two different large output data files. Regression automation of test cases. Regression quality analysis. So basically regression is a thing where uh, there are a set of test cases and uh, there is an automation engine there which runs a particular uh, software for testing on all the set of test cases. So this automation suit can be developed with uh, Perl and once this regression has run and all the runs has stopped, right, the, the output that has come across all the test, case, test cases, the quality analysis also can be done with the Perl. So these are two points uh, just mentioned. So the next point is VLSI CAD infrastructure building and maintenance. So what is VLSI CAD? VLSI CAD is basically uh, it's an automation uh, environment. So most of the design houses they have their internal setups where they use uh, internal uh, pulse uh, engines to create the uh, the whole suit that uh, includes from designing to the tape out so in this entire suit is developed uh, in the cases where it is used in Perl, right so there it uh, it will have a vast uh, multiple packages of pearls so they will be used and uh, this is how it makes the life easy for a designer and uh, most of these VLSI tools are in Linux. So this Perl uh, automation suit that helps to call all the command line based tools that are used in VLSI appropriately with a set of appropriate inputs and all. So that is the purpose of the Perl automation in VLSI to make life easier for a designer. Okay, so uh, and here I would like to mention one point because one particular stage of design has to be repeated multiple number of times. That's why automation helps the designer to just keep all the batch things that has to be run in that particular uh, set of uh, uh, initialization and uh, launching the tool and execution of the tool. So uh, this point is done. The next point is uh, modular or object oriented programming to protect sensitive data. So in VLSI, uh, when uh, global team works right they encapsulate their information through object oriented programming in Perl, so that the entire uh, design when it is worked on from different uh, uh, physical geographies right uh, uh, the sensitive data stay hidden so that is one one particular area where uh, oops is used in Perl. okay 
and there are many more so these are few points that uh, i have discussed with you uh, which are the areas in vlsi which uh, uh, vlsi engineer might uh, uh, face uh, where he or she can use the pearl okay but uh, it is not limited to all of these options because pearl is a programming language and you can write your own script to serve your own purpose so the usage of pearl is not limited so once you learn pearl it will be very easier for even your short uh, you can create your shorthand task in pearl okay so uh, we are done with this particular uh, slide let's move on to the next slide so before we begin let's uh, uh, introduce ourselves to the different parts of the pearl Perl is the abbreviation of practical extraction and reporting language. So this is uh, abbreviation. That is what is Perl, and Perl is not something that is we have, uh, uh, we can have uh, in the jewelry shops. That is this Perl is not that one. So this is uh, practical extraction and reporting language. Okay. Every Perl script in Linux or Unix must begin with hash bang user bin Perl. That is the path of the Perl and dash w is used for warning pearl is case sensitive that is dollar c is a completely different variable than dollar capital c so when you code in pearl keep it in mind whatever variables you are declaring or whatever uh, nomenclature you you are using you must be consistent in that okay so that uh, uh, you stick to a particular type of nomenclature and particular case sensitivity okay it is highly recommended that you use the use strict okay directive at the top of your all programs this forces to declare all your variables and causes Perl to complain when it sees a variable which has not been declared okay or even it could be a misspelling so because of this case sensitivity thing it is always uh, suggested that you use strict uh, this pragma at the beginning of your code it also checks the variable scopes in different blocks of a long code okay hash starts a comment in Perl. so whatever uh, comment you have to give in in Perl, whether it is a full length full line comment or it's the inline comment both can be star started with a hash okay if there is a multi-line comment you have to use multiple uh, hashes at each line okay so each line will start with a hash and that's how you make a multi-line comment every line of code ends with a semicolon okay so in Perl, this is very strict okay so this is the very uh, short uh, and sweet thing that you must know about the pearl before you start coding in pearl or before you jump into anything in pearl okay so these are the few uh, basic necessary things okay we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next installation so uh, here is the website so pearl.org slash get html so here if you go uh, whether you are using Linux or you are using Unix or you are using Mac or you are using Windows, you can get your particular Perl here. Okay. So once you go to this page, you can see Linux. Mostly in the cases of Linux, we can see that uh, Perl comes preloaded. Okay. It may not be the latest version for your sake of your uh, learning. You can um, go with it. Mostly whenever you are downloading and installing a Linux on your uh, home pc right it will be from the latest version of the uh, linux distro so basically more the Perl will be most updated there if it is not you can always have option to update the same thing for mac it comes included okay uh, you can also uh, get updated so in these uh, two, two in this particular page you will see these symbols right and if you have to download you can click on the get started of each of this one windows whereas compared to the mac or linux do not have the perl inbuilt perl do not come as an inbuilt installation in windows so to circumvent that situation either you can use a strawberry perl which is a software or active state perl which is another software so you can click on the get started there and download this strawberry perl 
uh, or active pearl uh, in setup.exe files okay and you can uh, click uh, the setup.exe file and install like any other programs that you install in windows so this is a summary so whether you are using linux mac or windows you can uh, use Perl any one of them and th this is another beauty of the Perl that Perl scripts can be ported obviously uh, these are not automation scripts because in in in, in a different windows your automation might become different and your tool might become different but for your programming and learning purpose okay your code can be ported to uh, uh, any of from in between okay and where it do, do not involve explicit disk uh, 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 access or any disk files okay where it's just pure program okay a procedure uh, oriented programming so in that case this code can be ported okay so we're done with this particular section let's move on to the next hello world programming pearl so this section i'm writing the code here so start the code with hashbang user bin pearl w use strict this must be used so keep it in mind whenever you are writing these two lines should be there okay obviously in with in your machine the pearl may be installed in a different path if you are using linux right there you might uh, 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 do the which command use the which command to find the pearl path and then include it like this okay so just replace the slash user slash bin slash pearl with your pearl path installation path in your machine okay so rest of the things remain same for windows it will not be there definitely there uh, you have to use the uh, instructions of uh, uh, strawberry pearl or active state pearl okay so here the first two lines go and the third line print uh, backslash n hello world then backslash n so this is very uh, easy to write okay so it will print the hello world so this is the uh, inside text of the file now once this you have written right save the above text file as hello.pl here one thing is to be mentioned Perl file generally we uh, save with the extension .pl okay so it uh, clearly identifies the Perl file okay give executable permission to it chmod plus x hello.pl then execute it as dot slash hello.pl output is hello world so this comes to your uh, linux shell okay when you execute it okay so this is this is the way you can write any Perl program you just have to have a text editor whatever a text editor you are using you can use that and you can uh, save it and then change the uh, permission to executable and then you can execute like this so this is the way inline Perl coding this is another important feature of Perl, where you do not have the right permission okay or need a very short Perl script so in it may happen that you are working on a network machine right uh, you are using a ssh or remote access right so in that particular machine you don't have explicit disk space where you can save a uh, uh, Perl script okay so in that case what happens right uh, you can run an inline code so uh, to, here I will show how you print a hello world code so your code could be very short okay uh, for long code it is suggested you write in a Perl file and execute so but for quick things right, like where you don't have a write permission you can use the inline Perl execution so this is the uh, syntax okay so Perl uh, in the command line you will write Perl then space then dash E then within single quotes you will include print then comes the double quote so this command should go the entire command should go uh, up to the semicolon inside single quotes and whatever inside there should be in the double quotes so like print sorry in for print it will be double quotes any other command will follow as its syntax okay so here print uh, hello world will be there so th this will uh, execute the hello world so if the code uh, is not saved but it can be executed okay so this is the way uh, you can execute uh, Perl so another important factor Perl is not a compiled language and Perl is uh, uh, interpreted language so that is the best thing that it acts very much faster and uh, uh, that's why Perl is used in many cases here it is not compiled um and it is uh, interpreted so that is the beauty of the pearl okay so let's uh, move on to the next one 
defining a variable uh, in Perl. So here we are talking about a scalar variable. A scalar variable means a variable which has a which has a single value. It is neither an array nor a hash. Okay, hash and array will be described in the later sections. Here we will talk about only scalar. Okay, so uh, which is a single variable. Okay, so let's see. To declare a variable, we use the my operator like my dollar var equal to 32 so it will define my and why we are using my because at the beginning i have mentioned that we are using the uh, use strict okay pragma okay so that uh, will uh, force you to use my okay and it is a good practice even if you missed out the use strict you put a habit of writing my so this defines a scope which will which we will see later okay in the later part of this uh, video to declare multiple variable variable at once we are not initializing any value we can write my then within uh, uh, parenthesis we can write dollar var one dollar var two dollar var three and we hit semicolon after that okay so this is way we can uh, define multiple variable at once Perl has a special undefined value, often written as undef. So undef is a uh, predefined keyword in uh, Perl. So uh, in the in the lines, okay, you see that we I have written that my dollar var one dollar var two dollar var three. So these are not having any value initialized. So they will be initialized with undef. Declared but not assigned variables have the value of undef. I just just uh, mentioned about this, okay. So you have de de uh, declared a variable but do not assign any value so that will by default contains the undef explicitly a variable can also be defined so dollar var equal to undef okay so if you define dollar uh, my var equal to 32 and the next line if you define dollar var equal to undef right that will uh, make the variable undefined okay the initialization is gone from there There is no boolean type such, uh, as such in Perl. Okay, boolean type means true false. Okay, instead Perl has a notion of truth or falsity of uh, any other scalar. So how let's see how it uh, is done in Perl. Zero, the number itself is false. Okay, the empty string within single quotes. Okay, and the string zero within single quotes are false so if we have a if condition right both of them will uh, return a false okay undef itself is false okay anything else is true so here we have defined the false there are three cases uh, three bullets we have discussed right which which are the false and anything else is true floating point values include the special values okay we have uh, say floating point means we have real values okay uh, real values so they contain inf that is a infinity and nan is a not a number for infinity and not a number the infinity can also be negative so these are more things that you have in uh Perl. so here in this slide we have discussed when we are using a scalar that is a single variable okay not an array of variable okay of any kind or list not those cases but only a single variable that is scalar that the details of a scalar uh, we have discussed here so uh, we are done with this section let's move on to the next type declaration in Perl Perl do not have explicit separate data type declaration such as integer real double or float okay so uh, those of you who have already learned C in their uh, colleges, right? You might say that okay, there is a, uh, a type declaration, integer real, okay. But in Perl, you have this flexibility. You do not explicitly you have to define each of them. So Perl takes care of them automatically, okay. However, a scalar can accommodate all the below types as dollar int is equal to forty two. It is treated as an integer, but automatically takes care internally. 
dollar pi is equal to dollar 3.14 159265 so it's a real number dollar data is equal to 6.02 e23 so it's a exponential notation dollar animal is within double quotes camel it's a string dollar sign is equal to within double quotes i love my dollar pet so uh dollar pet uh, is replaced uh, with camel okay which if we have initialized so animal or we can write here the animal dollar animal right we have just uh, in previous line we have written dollar animal so if we have written i love my dollar animal right so uh, it would have replaced with camel so dollar cost uh within single quote it cost dollar 100 string without interpolation so here not it it will be string this will be as is so nothing will be replaced so dollar 100 remains dollar 100 but in the previous case when it is used with within double quotes uh, uh the do dollar pet get replaced okay in sp in space of dollar pet if we have written dollar animal it would have replaced to camel or if we have written any of the above right dollar int dollar pi dollar data right it would, would have replaced that particular variable okay so and uh, so these two are called uh, string with interpolation for the double quoted and string without interpolation so uh, it is called uh, without interpolation so double quotes it uh, changes the variable uh, value to contain value okay but in the second case without interpolation it remains as is dollar number one is equal to dollar vat two another variable value it gets assigned to dollar number one okay dollar a b is equal to dollar a star dollar b so it's a mathematical operation we are multiplying so these are uh, okay mathematical operation like plus minus division modulus okay all these are okay and permitted in the scalar values so dollar out is within double back tick pwd so pwd is a shell uh, command right and that shell command will uh, execute in shell so if we include in dollar uh, uh, in the uh, within the back tick pwd it executes in the shell and output from that command is stored in dollar out so this is a way that we can capture any shell commands output in a in a scalar dollar exit we have to use a system then dollar uh, within the uh, first bracket we have used vi dollar x so uh, this uh, will execute dollar vi dollar x in the unique shell okay and the numeric return status of this command will be stored in dollar exit okay dollar apple uh, uh, dollar apple is equal to new user defined class name so your here comes your class name it's a oops part of the pearl that is object oriented pearl here and then name fruits so this will become an object of the particular class okay so these are the all type uh, data types that can go into a particular scalar and pearl internally takes care all of them so uh you can be rest assured that separately you do not have to do the type leak relation and Perl will take care all of the uh types that i have shown here okay uh in case i have missed anything that also okay so all of these data types will be contained in the uh, scalar my local and our variable A my declares the listed variables to be the local to the enclosing block file or eval if more than one variable is listed the list must be placed in parenthesis okay so uh, this is the purpose of the my that i was mentioning that whenever we are using use strict we must exclusively use the uh, my and whenever we are using a block of code uh, this uh, my will uh, make that variable uh, for that particular scope of that code okay local modifies the listed variable to be local to the enclosing block or file or eval more than one listed value the list must be placed in parentheses 
so here local does what it makes a temporary value so we, we have we have a global value and uh, making uh, a local value of it by using the local and and our create the package variable okay uh, here uh, our will create a package variable uh, it declares an alias for the package variable that will be visible across the entire lexical scope even across the package boundaries okay so let's see okay here we write a package for, uh, in uh, later part of this entire series we will come to the package but uh, here for a short and sweet example we are uh, showing this one package foo and then we write our bar so it declares the foo colon colon bar so it uh, package is nothing but a names a namespace okay so in that namespace bar is defined so this bar is our bar means it means for the package foo then we assign bar equal to 20 next we define package bar okay and then we say our bar equal to 30 so it declares the bar colon colon bar okay so the next uh, namespace okay uh, this bar goes to the next namespace here if we uh, print bar it prints 30 okay our bar emits the warning but has no effect so if you if you repeat it doesn't do anything okay because it's it will issue a warning then again we print bar it still prints 30 so basically our uh, ties a variable to that particular namespace okay which we have uh, uh, just preceded before that variable so these are my local and our so my is uh, in a nutshell my makes a variable uh, particular uh, private to uh, a code block okay local makes a uh, if if we if, if we have used any global value and we have to do uh, define a local temporary value we use local and our uh, is a completely different uh, uh, usage right it 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 related with the namespace okay so these are the th uh, three main uh, types of variable declaration my local and our okay so we are done with this particular slide let's move on special variables in part okay so so far we have uh, discussed uh, uh, the general uh, purpose or general uh, way of creating a variable and different values but Perl as a programming language does have a lot of special variables in it in this section we are discussing about all these variables dollar underscore the default input and uh, pattern searching space it is a global variable okay so uh, you need not to define it it is already there defined in in this section whatever variables we are uh, discussing right they are already predefined in part rather say and we have to see what are those one it's a default input uh, and pattern searching space it's a global variable the following function use dollar underscore as a default argument abs alarm chomp okay cost define eval experience uh apc glob hex int lc log uh, oct org post print printf okay all these things you can see here all these predefined functions in Perl they use dollar underscore as a default argument say uh, in, in in previous line you have just assigned something to dollar underscore and then in the next line you are using any of all these predefined functions okay so these functions will take the argument which we have set for the dollar uh, underscore and even we do not specify any argument to them okay so this is the way we uh, this dollar underscore is used another use the pattern matching this is a regular expression in Perl. okay we'll have a chapter on this or episode on this okay but uh, here just for your uh, sake of knowledge you know that uh, matching uh, string replacement or uh, transliterate okay in these three cases okay uh, or uh, the equal to delight that is a match matching operator in these cases dollar underscore is the default uh, variable to which these all matchings will be done okay this is a regular expression the default iterator variable in a for loop sorry in a for each loop with no other variable supplied so if we are using a for each loop and we have not uh, declare, uh, declared a iterating variable on which we are uh, uh, 
rotating the for each counter okay so in that case dollar underscore becomes our predefined uh, iterator variable okay the implicit iterator variable for grape and map functions these are two another functions uh, in this case also it uh, uh, it's the implicit iterator the implicit variable of given it is another Perl function the default place to put the next value or the input record when a file handle used okay for the file io right we we, we also have these dollar underscore defi uh, defined okay so read line read uh, dir or each operation result is tested by itself and the sole criterion of the while test outside a while test this will not happen so inside the while loop when we are opening a file right uh, the lines which we are reading from the file using the file handle will come to the dollar underscore by default so if you have not defined any particular variable to get the lines the lines will automatically come into dollar underscore so this is for file io so this is how uh, special uh, variables in Perl. so we have more special variables so let's move on to the next slide to see them at the rate underscore with uh, within a subroutine of the array underscore uh, at the rate underscore contains parameters passed to that particular subroutine so when we are using subroutine that is functions in Perl, this will contain all the arguments okay inside a subroutine at the rate underscore is the default array for the array operators pop and shift okay this is also another use dollar a and dollar b these are special package variables when we are using sort function okay sort does all all kind of sorting it could be numerical it could be ascii okay but dollar a and dollar b these are special variables there that are tied with sort function okay uh, because of these specialness dollar a and dollar b don't need to be declared uh, to used uh, uh, um, using the vars or our or even okay uh, using the strict vars pragma don't lexicalize them with uh, dollar my uh, a or dollar my b if you want to be able to use them in the sort or comparison block so this dollar a dollar b are very much don't need any declaration to be used in the sort function so they are very default so uh, we'll see later on we'll use the sort function okay and here dollar a and dollar b special have a special meaning when we are using the sort function uh, percentage env so this hash this is a hash okay it's a hash table or a associative array right that contains your current system environment variables and their values can be manipulated by hash or associative array okay so you can add a value or change a value using our hash operators okay uh, or the associative array operators so percentage env where we get uh, all the environment variables when we are uh, using inside the Perl script so from in, from inside the Perl scheme we, we can set a environment variable using this particular data structure or we can uh, get a particular uh, um, system variable using percentage env okay so at the red inc the next one is the array contains the, uh, the list of places uh, to do xpr require or use construct blocks okay it is uh, uh, initially consists the arguments of any dash i command of the lines which is followed by the default Perl library probably used by local libpar so at the rate inc contains all the Perl library path this is very simple okay Perl library means Perl when you run a script right it will use its default function and all all those are stored in different Perl libraries so those Perl libraries are can can be found in dollar i at the rate uh, sorry at the rate inc okay this array at the right isa okay this comes in the object oriented Perl part okay so i uh, at the right isa each package contains a special array called at the right isa which consists a list of that classes parent classes okay if any this array is a simply a list of scalars each of which is a string that corresponds to a package name the array examined when Perl does method resolution which is covered in Perl object okay so at the rate isa it is very much tied to the object oriented part we'll see the use also there so these are some more special variables we have discussed so we are done with this particular slide let's move on oh there are some more special variables let's see them dollar dollar 
the process number of the Perl running your present script itself. So if you are running a Perl script, right, it has a also a process number. So dollar dollar gives that. I mean, these are inside your Perl script, not outside. So inside your Perl script, if you want to print, you can use these particular variables. Dollar zero contains the name of the Perl program that is being executed. So when you execute a Perl, right, Perl program, so dollar zero, if you print, right, it will print the file name itself, which you are running dollar digits dollar one dollar two etc contains the sub pattern form corresponding to the set of capturing parentheses from the last successful parent match so this comes uh, from the part of the regular expression so we'll see later dollar one dollar two this comes the uh, matched groups okay basically not counting patterns matched with the nested blocks that have been uh, exited already okay so these dollar one dollar two they uh, give you the matched uh, substrings okay dollar and person the string matched by the last successful pattern matching okay and any matches is in within a block or eval enclosed by the current block so dollar and person gives you the last pattern matching dollar arg v contains the name of the current file when we are reading from the uh, angular operator okay at the rate arg v the array at the rag v contains the command line arguments intended for the script so when we are running a Perl script with set of arguments uh, apart from the file name say dot slash my program dot pl and then we have some uh, arguments all those arguments will be saved in at the rate arg v okay for exhaustive list of this all variables special variables predefined variables you can go to up to this link Perl dot uh, this https perldoc.perl.org slash perlvar so if you go there if you have a thirst to know what are the are many other variables that are defined predefined in variable in perl so you can go and learn about them so in this particular uh, uh, video uh, i have shown couple of them which are more frequently used and come to you but still there is a list remaining if you want to get that list go to this particular url i'll uh, i'll give this url in my video description so there you can go into this particular page and you can learn about them so we are done with this particular slide let's move on special literals and bare word special literals like uh, this uh, underscore file then underscore then underscore line okay this file line and package you can see how differently they are written okay they are written in caps okay and they have uh, before and after they have underscores these represent the current file name the line number and the package name that point in your program so these have special meanings so that is why these are called special literals this file this line and the package these literals uh, have the file name the line number and the package name similarly sub this special literal gives a reference to the current subroutine bare words a word that has no other interpretation will be treated as a quoted string these are known as bare words so generally where uh, we see the bare words in hash table or the associative array key can be bare words so bare words uh, we'll see there uh, once we discuss a bare word that consists entirely the lowercase letter risk uh, conflict with the future reserve keyword and if you use the use warnings or the dash w switch Perl will warn about any such words so bare word that is clashing with any of the pre-reserved uh, keywords in Perl, like unday for something so uh, if you write it in somewhere right it will issue a warning okay uh, so use warning is another thing that you can use with uh, the use strict or if you have included the dash w that will serve the purpose so beware of the bare words okay if you use the use strict okay then any of the bare word that would not be interpreted as a uh, compile time error only bare word are allowed as a hash key not the value so and I, I just mentioned that where we are using right hash key can be a bare word but not its value so we are done with this particular slide let's move on we have uh, reached to this end of this episode thank you for listening carefully and uh, more episodes are there to come so say stay tuned Perl is a very vast language so here uh, 
lot of episodes are in pipeline so stay tuned